In the shadowy depths of the world's oceans, a silent revolution has been taking place, one that could reshape how nations think about deterrence, war, even peace itself. It doesn't flash across headlines. It doesn't show up in military parades. It glides beneath miles of water, hidden by pressure, distance, and deep sea darkness. Yet its implications extend to every capital, every command center with global reach. I'm talking about China's strategic nuclear submarines, the undersea giants that are quietly transforming what second strike means and forcing Washington to rethink old assumptions. China's journey began with modest ambitions. In the late 1990s, Beijing launched a program to replace its noisy, experimental first-generation SSBNS, and the result was the Type 094, known to NATO as the Jin class. By 2007, the lead boat was commissioned. Over the next decade, China added more hulls. As of 2021, six Type 094, 09 for A subs are active, but the latest, Hull Changjiang 80, entering service in April 2021. What changed the game was what slid into their missile tubes, the JL to submarine launched ballistic missile. At about 7,000 to 100 kilometers range, JL to gave the Jin class its first credible sea based strike capability, enough to reach far flung targets from patrol zones in the Western Pacific. That combination, a nuclear-powered SSB and its C-plus solid-fuel SLBM transformed the Type 094 from a large submarine into a genuine second-strike platform. Deterrence patrols reportedly began in December 2015. For the first time, China had a survivable sea-based nuclear leg. That alone marked a shift in strategic balance. It meant, even if fixed-missile sites or bombers were destroyed in a first strike, China could still retaliate from under the sea. But China didn't stop there. Over the last several years, it has pushed forward stealth, endurance, and missile range in a serious leap. The new Type 96 SSBN, still under construction, and the more advanced JL-3 SLBM represent the next frontier. According to open source intelligence and recent defense analysis reports, JL-3's estimated range now exceeds 10,000 kilometers, potentially reaching the continental United States from patrol areas close to China, such as the South China Sea. Type 096 is reported to feature a new hull design optimized for stealth, improved acoustic signature, updated sensors, and possibly an increased missile load. Rumors suggest 16 to 20 for JL3 SLB MIS per boat. That would materially raise both firepower and survivability. Now let's compare that quietly rising force with the current US undersea nuclear posture. The backbone of America's sea based deterrent remains the Ohio class SSBNS each historically carrying up to 20 for Trident to D5 missiles, though treaty and real-world loadouts are lower. Combined with decades of operational experience, mature logistics, proven MIRV capability, and a global support network, the U.S. still holds substantial advantages. But the gap is narrowing, at least when you focus on survivable second strike from closed bastion waters. A Type 096 with JL-3, hiding in the South China Sea or Western Pacific, could threaten much of the U.S. mainland. That changes the strategic calculus. Denial of access to Pacific waters may no longer guarantee a reliable first strike advantage. Still, parity doesn't mean identical. An Ohio class with Trident and a Chinese 096 with JL3 are not clones. Differences remain number of warheads, crew training, years of patrol experience, reliability, command and control systems, and global basing infrastructure. But the defining metric of nuclear deterrence is survivability. The confidence a state retains a retaliatory capability even after sustaining a first strike. On that metric, China is catching up fast. Operational clues tell us this transformation isn't theoretical. Satellite imagery from the mid-2010s first showed Type 09 for holes at submarine bases. By 2015-2016, Western naval analysts began publicly assessing that the Jin class had achieved credible sea-based deterrent status. Additional reports indicate the plan has transitioned some boats to carry JL-3, likely as part of a phased upgrade. In response, U.S. and Allied naval forces have quietly adjusted posture, more anti-submarine patrols, expanded sonar networks across the Western Pacific, renewed emphasis on ASW-capable aircraft and attack submarines. The cat-and-mouse game under the waves is becoming a major strategic front, not just for Taiwan or the South China Sea, but for global deterrence and stability. For Americans watching this, the takeaway is simple, but profound. China's sea-based nuclear force has moved from experiment to credible reality, and it's evolving fast. The silent giants beneath the waves are not a fantasy or rumor. They are real, they are growing in capability, 
and they will increasingly shape 21st century strategic balance. Whether this future brings more stability or more risk depends in large part on decisions made in capitals, not on the surface of the sea. So the next time you think about great power competition, remember, the most dangerous weapons are often the ones you never see.